Hello, welcome to Parallel Painting. Today we're going to be painting a beautiful poppy field. We're going to start off with our bristle brush. We're going to do a horizon line and you're just going to do a gradient fading from light green at the middle to dark green at the bottom. Then you can go ahead and clean out your bristle brush and we're going to do just plain blue paint at the top. If you want to neutralize it a little bit, you can add a little bit of red in and it's more like a cobalt blue paint. So we're gonna do a gradient. Oh, don't add yellow. I was like trying not to do aqua and I did anyways. So clean your brush out and start anew. So then you can mix a little bit of white in and you just want it to fade from dark blue at the top and then it's fading down into a lighter blue. You're going to go about halfway down your sky and we're kind of going to end up adding in yellow anyways. So that's no problem. So you want to clean out your brush really, really well. Um, make sure you get the extra water out and we're going to mix up that pale yellow. So same brush, the bristle brush. We're going to mix up a tint. So a lot of white and a little bit of yellow. And we're going to come in horizontal brush strokes. And then you can add a little bit of red to get a little bit of a nice peachy sunset color brushing from the sides of the canvas in towards the middle and kind of a light touch so you get those kind of wispy brush strokes and you do want to paint the sky kind of rather quickly so that it's still wet and the colors still blend together if it's not really blending and you're seeing a lot of the texture of the canvas We'll try using a little bit more paint. So I'm just kind of layering it on here and it's perfect if the green paint is still wet or if the blue paint is still wet because it's just going to blend in even better and it's gonna look even more realistic. So I'm just coming in and touching that up a little bit and then I'm gonna come in with some of that blue on the sides, you can mix in a little bit of red again if you want to neutralize it. And now for the clouds. So I'm switching to the pointed size seven round brush and just straight white paint. And I'm doing diagonal lines just to give the sky a little bit of movement. And then see when you take your one inch flat, just get it damp and very, very lightly do kind of like feathering brush strokes over the clouds. You want to make your brush so that the handle is kind of close to the canvas. You're touching so lightly. And so I just kind of keep switching back and forth between the pointed brush and the flat brush. So right there is where we're gonna add in the sun later. So we're just kind of light, lightening up that area where the sun's gonna go. And now I'm just gonna keep adding in more clouds. So for the picture plane, it just works well to have a diagonal on each side. That works well for the composition. And then again, lightly, lightly brushing over it with the one inch flat brush. And if the paint is not wet, this technique won't work. It'll, it'll still look okay, but it's gonna be a lot kind of scruffier and you'll see the texture of the canvas. So if it's really wet, then it'll really blend together for you. And your clouds for sure don't need to be just like mine. You know, clouds come in all shapes and sizes. They're different every moment of every waking day. So it really, you can't go wrong. And so you can see there, I used a little bit of the white paint to just kind of dab dots with the bristle brush. So you can see up there in the top corner, that's what will happen if the paint isn't wet enough. So now I have to go back in and add a little bit more blue with my one inch flat brush. And now I'm just kind of feathering it out. Very, very light brush strokes. And I'm adding a little gray in now. So a little white, little black, one inch flat. My brush strokes are starting on the edge of the canvas and brushing towards the center. I'm adding just a little bit of red in over on the So you can continue just adding brush strokes to the sides. 
And then I'm just going in and adding a few more clouds. I'm going to do a little chemtrail. And you can have them intertwined, so using the pointed brush and thick white paint. Have them kind of cross. So with the pointed brush, you want to lay your brush with the thick white paint so that the handle is close to the canvas. If it's perpendicular and pointing straight up, you're just going to dig off the paint from the background. So that's super important to have the very, very light touch. So again, just kind of feathering it out with the one inch flat. So now you're going to take your pointed brush and black paint and do a horizon line. It doesn't need to be straight because it's nature, so it can have a little wave to it. And then you can really add the silhouette of whatever you want, so just plain black paint. If you want to do like a little trees, you can just kind of lightly tap your brush. If you want to do buildings, you could do that. You could do hills, um, really whatever you want to do there. So next you're going to take your size 12 bristle brush and you can take some green paint. Any green will do, yellow and blue mixed together, straight green, and you're going to do vertical brush strokes, kind of flicking your brush. You want your brush to be really like scruffy, so you can scrub it in a circle so that all the bristles kind of fan out in different directions. And then I like to use many different shades of green. Um, yellow and black make a great green together as well. So I'm doing vertical brush strokes, flicking my brush very lightly on the canvas. So right now we're mainly just creating texture. So it's not like you need to feel like you're painting an individual brush strokes for each little blade of grass. It's more about just creating the texture. So you'd want it to appear smaller, far away. So we're going to do more of a kind of tapping, gently tapping your brush so that the marks you make are very small. And then to make it appear like it's coming towards you, you want to do longer brush strokes as you work towards the foreground. Then you can mix up a lighter green, add a little bit of white to it, a little bit more yellow to make them more vibrant here in the foreground. So now I'm taking the pointed brush and I'm doing more defined stems and also I'm doing little dots and those can be like the heads of flowers and you can dip in yellow and dark green at the same time, kind of give them some shape and some dimension without having to paint each one individually. And then when you're ready you can start in with your poppies. So I've got my pointed brush and just straight white paint. If you use just plain red, the dark green of the background is going to show through because most acrylic paint is not that thick that you can't see the light through it. So it'll be dark underneath and it will appear kind of a dark red. So that's good for some of the poppies, but also we want some that really, really stand out here in the foreground. So you're going to start off doing white ones first and you want them facing kind of all different directions and you want them to look random, right? You don't want them all one inch apart, all the exact same size. So keep it as random as possible and you want them to get smaller as they go backward. And you can look up like a photo of poppies, but they're basically, I think they have five petals. They usually overlap um, and they have a very kind of delicate wavy nature about them. So you can see as I'm moving towards the back I'm starting to just dab my brush. I'm not painting in individual petals. And I also like to start moving backward when I start running out of paint and that way it looks a little bit faded. So now it's time for the fun part. We're going to start adding in the red. So I'm starting off with the size 12 bristle brush and I'm grabbing globs of white paint, but again, my brush is all kind of scruffy and the bristles are all fanned out. And I'm just very lightly tapping the paint onto the canvas. And again, you want it as random as possible. So if you keep holding your brush the same direction, you'll keep making the same marks. So you want to kind of turn your brush in different directions. And I am doing red. So I'm doing bigger globs. I am doing red where there's no white as well. 
because you want as many different shades and as many different values of red as you can so it looks closer to nature it's not like they would all look the same and then I am dipping in a little bit of black and lightly tapping that and I'm going to do the same with kind of a pale yellow so you can just lightly tap the pale yellow on right over the top And now I'm going to come in and start painting over the white with bright red paint. So if you paint kind of thin, they'll appear really, really bright. And then if you want kind of a deep, true red, you can paint a little bit thicker. And don't worry about landing exactly where you have the white because some of the petals would be overlapping, some would be a little bit in shadow. And so they'll just look like overlapped petals. And on top of that, there's so many on here, no one is going to look and be like, hey, that little flower right there, what happened there? So you can just kind of go for it. And don't overthink it. So now you can take your pointed brush and you can start adding black to the bottoms of the petals, so right when they kind of emerge from the stem. And you can also just add a little bit of maroon, mix the red and black together, and add that in. And it doesn't even matter if you even land on it, so don't try to take too much time getting them just right. So now I'm adding in a few more poppies, and you really want your picture to look like it expands beyond the picture plane. You want people to imagine that there's poppies, you know, even beyond. You don't want them to feel all contained. So it really helps to add some to the edges. And maybe you only see a part of it, but the ones down at the bottom are for sure going to be the biggest. So you want to make those quite large. And I'll dip my brush in red and black at the same time, and I just love the way that looks. Kind of shade them as you go. So the last thing is we're going to add our sun back in. So you can use a little detail brush, just some straight white paint, and just add a little circle wherever you want your sun to go. And then I also like to do little horizontal brush strokes out from where the sun is. And then I'll go over the sun one more time with white. And that's the last step. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you next time.